Hey, I'm a farmer from Spencer, Iowa, and I'm on my farm where we've got irrigation set up. And uh, on this farm, we're irrigating about 64 acres of uh, corn this year. Last year we had soybeans and it was our first year of, uh, of irrigation. How we irrigate this field is we've got a thing called a water reel and it's got a 1200 foot hose that we pull out every morning um, with that tractor back there and at night every 12 hours. And when you pull it out, it sprays about 6.3 acres with water at about a rate of about 180 to 190 gallons a minute. You know, we've really seen a lot of improvements in our you know, crop health and stuff like that. Uh, last year with, uh, with the soybeans, we had an increase in yield of about 35 to 40 bushels. Uh, we set up a 1200 foot irrigation line and it's a uh, six inch aluminum pipe that you put together in different sections and you clamp them together. Um, and then every 150 feet, we've got a little valve that you open up um, with a hose uh, on, on the irrigation line. And then that gets your water inside of your water reel and goes down that plastic line into your end gun and out onto your field. This basically houses all of uh, the electronics. So this is my variable frequency drive where we can set up how fast the pump is running or how much the pump's running. These controls go over here to uh, the wellhead. There's actually a line, an electric line underneath here that runs to the wellhead. And then the water comes out here into this hose and that pumps into our aluminum line that you see right there. And then uh, and that pumps into the reel there. So how we decide to start up the system is, uh, well, I guess this year we just kind of waited until the first part of July because we wanted the corn to get a nice deep root system so it can tap into that subsoil moisture. What we've got going right now as far as our one well is not enough to fully um, you know, keep the corn going if it totally shuts off raining. So we still need to get supplemented with the rain from the sky. So we're not too worried about you know, over watering the field. We're, we're more worried about underwatering it. Um, that's why we're trying to get, get ahead of any, any dry spell. So this year, as soon as the roots get down in the subsoil uh, far enough, you know, we kick on the system and then we're able to uh, supplement it with water. We get anywhere between, I think, 40 to 50% of the water or so um, that's needed for the entire crop out of that, that gun. So it just helps supplement it with the irrigation later on in the season ahead of pollination and then into, into and after pollination. I think that's, that's a key time to, uh, to water your corn. Your soybeans like a, you know, a little bit later and a little bit less water really. That too with the no-till and the cover crops, I think we save anywhere between two and three, maybe three and a half inches of, uh, of moisture just with those practices. It is a lot of work, but um, it's about anywhere between 25 to 30 percent of what your traditional pivot would cost on this field. Plus, it works a lot better for your smaller fields. And this uh, this farm I purchased on the Beginning Farmer Program in uh, well, it would have been in February of 2020, and then that year of 2020 was the first year I was able to farm it. Um, I'm also getting. Uh, carbon credits this year on this farm as well um, with a company called SIBO and uh, they're paying us for our no-till and cover crop practices this year and, and the carbon sequestration that comes along with that. So we're uh, you know really happy to be doing a lot of these newer things on this farm. You know we do a lot of things you know differently but uh, that's what it takes in agriculture that innovate.